Hi everybody, it's Nikki here and say it with me, it's bookgammon time! Yes, it is that time in the month where I play my TBR game Bookgammon, which is based on the board game Backgammon, to help me pick the next month's TBR. Today we will be playing for March, so let me put it down, because you know she gets noisy. Okay, so starting off with housekeeping. The first part of housekeeping is our priority picks, which are the books that are on the current month's TBR, in this case for February, uh, that I have not got to and um, don't think I will uh, get to read in February. So they become the priority for picking um, for the prompts pulled for March. I still have a week left to go and um, there's not a single book left on my TBR. Um, I, I will say that I am still reading two of my TBR books, uh, but those are the last two that are on my TBR. So, um, <laughs> had a good month. Uh, considering it's the shortest month of the year, despite it being a leap year this year, um, so we get an extra day, I'm ahead of schedule. Um, I, I've just been in the reading mood this month. So, um, that's not to say that I'll get the last two books finished by the end of February, as they are the two largest ones on my TBR for the month. Um, but you know what? I'll give it a damn good go and uh, at least I've started them. At least I've started them. Um, and as I say, I still have uh, a week or so left to go. So um, I'll, I'll get the majority of it read. If not both of them, at least one of them will be finished by then. So no priority picks for March, which is great, which means we have a clean slate to pick. Uh, so the next port of call of housekeeping is our star book and our bomb book. So for, oh, here we go. Uh, so for our star book for the month of March, I am dying to get this started. This is The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. Not only because my surname is Pearson, uh, my married surname is Pearson, um, but because this story sounds so up my alley, I know I would just devour this. Plus it's a really fluffy one and I really like fluffy books. Um, so this is obviously The Kiss Deception where we have a princess who is, um, she is expected uh, to marry a guy and uh, she decides to flee and live life as a like a commoner kind of thing um and then two guys show up we know that one is the man she was meant to marry and the other one is an assassin but we don't know which one is which and neither does she um also as well she's expected to have the revered gift of sight which she doesn't uh so she's also battling with uh, the fact that she's supposed to have this magical power she doesn't what is she going to do about it so so excited to read this one will T um but gammon be nice to me for a third month in a row um and let me read my star book we'll have to wait and see for the bomb book <laughs> uh i have been picking bo my bomb book from my t these books will self-destruct in 12 months video that i did back in december and i couldn't decide which one of my 12 books I wanted to pick for my bomb book this month, so I asked my husband to pick a number between 1 and 12. He picked number 7, which was A Targetus by M.C. Watson. Now, A Targetus is meant to be the origins of the mermaid story. Um, so I don't know what a leprechaun has to do with that, or this big eye in the sky, but um, yes. Uh, so this is when a targetess was left on earth by her parents, Zeus and Hera. She was tasked with bringing justice and peace to the land of Syria in 3000 BC and swiftly became a goddess loved by her people. After four years on her own, a targetess was finally reunited with her family on Olympus and welcomed with open arms. Yet Zeus had some uncertain plans for her marriage. Uh, bound by her father's wishes to marry his own brother Hades, god of the underworld, a targetess is now torn between her true love and her duty. The tempestuous god Hades' impatience and jealousy begin to run wild and soon there will be a battle at hand, but which lover will win? Now, if I know my Greek myths, 
then I know that Hades ends up with Persephone, but I'm sure he had another wife before then, didn't he? Or I don't know. Um, this is not a myth that I've ever heard of before. I've never heard of a Targetus until I found this book. And then when I looked into it and discovered it had something to do with mermaids, um, I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I get the bomb book, this is what I will be reading. Fingers crossed. So, let's roll to gameplay and see what book Gammon has in store for me for the month of March. Okay, so we have our board here. We have our prompts, so let's give those a shuffle. Okay. We have our bomb token and our star token, so let's place the bomb token first. So let's roll the number. Number 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So on the blue square. And for the star token. Sorry. Number three, so on the purple square. So let's roll the dice for roll number one. Five and a six, so that's 11. And we have the pink prompt. We've missed the star in the bomb book, but never mind. And the prompt is modern romance. For roll number two, a one and a two, so that's three. One, two, three, so we get an e-book as this is a white square, a uh, square, they're triangles, Nicola. <laughs> so um, we get an e-book for this prompt, so no uh, prompt. Our third roll. A two and a four, so that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a blue triangle. And the prompt for that is, has an author's note. Could this be our final roll? We only need five or more to get home. And we did, we got a five and a four, so that's nine. One, two, three, four, and we're home. Well, that was a quick game. Just three prompts this time, and one of them was an ebook. But as we neither landed on the bomb book or the star book, let's flip a coin and see which one we're going to be reading this month. So, as oh, come on. <laughs> so, as usual, we're going to have heads as our star book and tails as our bomb book. Here we go. Oh no, we got our bomb book this month. <laughs> so that is it for another month. That is our March book gammon. So that was gameplay. Only three prompts this turn round and the bomb book. <laughs> I knew she was being too nice to me. <laughs> I knew my luck was going to run out. But anyway, let's get to it. So our first roll landed us on a pink space. So the prompt for that was modern romance. So I am going with this book. I've seen a lot of people talking about this book. And when I read the synopsis, I thought, hmm, that sounds awfully familiar. Uh, this is Icebreaker by Hannah Grace, and the synopsis says, um, Anastasia Allen has worked her entire life for a shot at Team USA. It looks like everything is going according to plan when she gets a full scholarship to the University of California at Maple Hills and lands a place on their competitive figure skating team. Uh, not in more stand in her way, not even the captain of the hockey team, Nate Hawkins. 
Nate's focus as captain is on keeping his team on the ice, which is tricky when a facilities mishap means they are forced to share a rink with the figure skating team, including Anastasia, who clearly can't stand him. But when Anastasia's skating partner faces an uncertain future, she may have to look to Nate to take her shot. Sparks fly, but Anastasia isn't worried because she could never like a hockey player. Right? This does say 18 plus content, not suitable for young readers. So this is definitely adult content. And as it is rated 18 plus, I'm hoping for a lot of smut in here, which is right up my alley. Um, but the reason why I say this uh, sounds familiar is because one of my favourite films is The Cutting Edge. Can you see that? Now, this is a film about Moira Kelly um, and D.B. Sweeney, who star as polar opposites who unite on the ice for a shot at Olympic gold in this inspirational romantic comedy from acclaimed director Paul M. Glazer, bringing with wit and charm and plenty of breathtaking sports action, The Cutting Edge is a real winner. So she is a rich and refined pairs figure skater whose prima donna attitude has her skating solo. He's a brash blue collar hockey champion with a new injury and no future. With nothing in common but their dream of reaching the Olympics, Kate and Doug are each other's last resort. Reluctantly, they join forces, but it's not long before the barbs and sparks start flying as the unlikely pair skate towards the opportunity of a lifetime, a chance at a medal and a chance at love. So this is the cutting edge and this is Icebreaker. They sound awfully similar. A figure skater with no partner and an ice hockey player who needs to win basically. Um, so I am going to read the book and watch the film and see how similar these storylines are. Uh, any excuse to watch the film again to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I want to see, are these really, really as similar as they sound? Because if the book is similar to the film, I'm going to love the book. And if the book has smut in it as well, I mean, it's a win-win. Surely it's a win-win. So yes, very excited to read this one. Our second role landed us on an ebook square. So I have my Kindle here and I am going to be reading the ebook Opium and Absinthe by Lydia Kang. So according to Goodreads, it says uh, Tilly Pembroke's sister lies dead, her body drained of blood and with two puncture wounds on her neck. Bram Stoker's new novel Dracula, my favourite classic, has just been published and Tilly's imagination leaps to the impossible. The murderer is a vampire, but it can't be, can it? A ravenous reader and researcher, Tilly has something of an addiction to truth and she won't rest until she unravels the mystery of her sister's death. Unfortunately, Tilly's addicted to more than just truth. To ease the pain from a recent injury, she's taken more and more laudanum and some in her immediate circle are happy to keep her well supplied. Tilly can't bring herself to believe vampires exist, but with the hysteria surrounding her sister's death, the continued vampiric slayings and the opium swirling through her body is becoming increasingly difficult for a girl who relies on facts and figures to know what's real or whether she can trust those closest to her. So that is sounding really, really exciting. Um, possible vampires. Are there vampires? It does look like it is a standalone novel as well. So that will be really, really good. Um so yeah, I just I just want to get that read and um, I, I can't wait to read it because as I say, it's vampires. Bram Stoker's Dracula is, you know, part of the storyline. So cannot wait for that one. Our third role landed us on the blue space and the prompt for that is, has an author's note. You have no idea. <laughs> How long it took me to like be looking through all of my books trying to find an author's note. Now this one doesn't technically label it as an author's note but it, it pretty much is. So this is What Lurks Between the Fates by Harper L. Woods. It is the third book in the Of Flesh and Bone series. The fourth book is due to come out in April. It was due out last year 
unfortunately it must have been pushed back so I would like to get this one read in anticip anticipation of the fourth book being released in April and hopefully I'll be able to pick that one up and um, read it so as this is the third book in the series I can't really tell you what it is about um, but we basically have this world where uh, there is a veil between the fey world and the human world and um, in the first book that veil falls and the fey are basically hunting their partners in the human world so the fey are partnered with a human and uh the, the so the fey are hunting their partners uh the fey marked uh humans and the humans are trying to find the fey mark so that they can kill them um because they are seen as not not because they don't like them um so yeah and their story continues from there i wasn't keen on the second book so i'm hoping that the third book has a little bit more to it um otherwise i won't be continuing with book four but i need to re read book three to see if book two was just a one-off or whether it's going downhill uh from the first book so yes i'm going to be reading this one and then of course we got the dreaded bomb book. So thanks to my husband's pick, I'm going to be reading A Targetist. Look, it's only short. Um, apparently it's only 195 pages, so it should be a quick read. It's supposed to be the start of the siren mermaid sort of mythology, so I should be interested in it. It's just, it looks weird. <laughs> I don't understand what the leprechaun's got to do with Syria. 3000 BC. I don't understand. Maybe I will after I've read it. Who knows? Uh, so again, not the star book. <laughs> Look, if my reading goes as well in March as it has done in February, I might just read my... If I get everything else read, I might just read my star book anyway. So who knows? Um, but that is not all I will be reading within the month of March because I do have a buddy read in March. Uh, my friend Charlotte and I have been reading Defy the Night throughout February and we are going to be continuing on with the trilogy um, by reading Defend the Dawn in March. So uh, this is written by Bridget Kemmerer and the first book is about two people, a boy and a girl, fella and a lass, whatever, um, and Wes and... Um, what's her name, Tessa, uh, are distributing a elixir that is helping the poor to defeat a illness that is ravaging the land. Um, the only problem is they have to do this in secret under the, uh, under the darkness because they are seen as smugglers by doing this and smugglers are prosecuted in this land. So all is not as it seems. Um, and uh yeah it's a lot of political intrigue a lot of like who's who and really really interesting storylines so i'm excited to move on to the second book and find out where the story is kind of going uh from the end of the first book so yes we will be reading that one as well so my march tbr is looking like Whoop. I'll put that on top of there as well to, to uh, denote the ebook. So my March TBR is looking something like this. We have Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. We have What Lurks Between the Fates by Harper L. Woods. We have A Targetist by M.C. Watson. We have Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kemmerer. And we have Opium and Absinthe by Lydia Kang. So that is my March TBR. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.